Look at that. Came out amazing. Just what I wanted. Couldn't be more happy. What is up everybody? Welcome back to another video. I've already been starting to get working. So I've already gloved up. Grinder and bevel this edge. Flush weld this instead of this like this. So I'll just bevel this in down. Um, and then when this slides on, then I'll just be able to weld and fill in the middle. Uh, here is the beveled edge I just did. And um, when this sticks on there like that, you can see now um, it will, I'll be able to make penetration all the way. So that's how I'm gonna do this. So uh, what I've gotten done so far now is I measured out um, the tie rod, the lower one that I'm gonna use. It turns out I won't have to put any bins in it uh, because I will be removing one of the shock brackets for the stabilizer. Uh, I don't run those on mine, not a huge fan of that look. So I have never had one on my truck. So that's gonna be coming off and that will give me uh, room when I turn, it won't hit that bracket. So I'm just gonna run this straight across from the you know wheel to wheel. Um, and I've made my mark right here, if you can see, I don't know. Anyways, I need to cut right there. Um, and that will, that will give me the exact length I need. Um, and I'll be able to adjust it with the heim joints to fine tune it but that will get me uh, in the ballpark. Um, I tack welded it. I'm not gonna fully weld it until I can fit it on the truck um, and make sure everything lengthwise is good because once I weld these, these uh, fittings will be, not the this part, but the actual part that welds in there is pretty much going to be toast um, and I you know they're pretty expensive heim joints are so I don't want to have to worry about getting any more heim joints um, or you know more tubing this kit um, isn't cheap but uh, once you do it you'll never have to replace tie rod ends or drag links um, anything like that super tight um, you can see right here I zip tied it so they'll stay together uh, because I'm gonna have to take this um, to town tomorrow to get bolts um, so this is kind of the situation though um, this right here is the tie rod um, so that runs from let me show you. That's gonna run on, on the bottom here. Um, and uh, I'll put maybe a uh, screenshot of the directions from Rough Stuff, how to install this exactly, as far as the diagrams. But the tie rods go on the bottom, and same over there will connect on the bottom. The top, um, which is this drag link right here. And instead of putting a joint here, the joint's just gonna be right here and it's gonna run down. Uh, I'm gonna have it run straight for 16 inches and then do the bend up to the pitman arm. Before I go on too much farther, let me show you the difference. In your kit from Rough Stuff, they will come with different looking misalignment spacers here. Um, you can see the three different ones they give. Um, these, for whatever reason, are for extra strength, they say. I could take a long time going over uh, where they go right now, um, but uh, since you're gonna see this video um, in you know straight through I'm not gonna go over it right now 
uh, because I'll cover that later when I install the kit um, and tell you exactly where they go. Uh, it's quite simple, but there is a specific way that the misalignment spacers have to go uh, for optimal strength. I'm going to pick up the bolts uh, that I need. Um, I need two 5 inch and one 7 inch. Um, and those are going to be grade 8. You're not going to want to get anything less than grade 8. Uh, you want the best because if your steering goes, then you're pretty much toast and your vehicle is probably going to get totaled especially if you're going at a high rate of speed. Um, if your steering brakes, your wheels will spin opposite directions. It might even rip your axle out from under you. It'll be bad. So just do it right. Uh, another thing, don't skimp on the welding. <laughs> it is the next, uh, next day. Um, just got back from work, but I went to uh, True Value Hardware. They seem locally to me to have the best option of grade eight bolts. Okay guys, I just got back. Um, well, my wife and I just got back in Aylin. Um, my daughter got back from uh, Home Depot and Lowe's. We kind of just ran out, got some Starbucks. I was able to pick up a three-quarter inch drill bit uh, so that is the size I need to drill out each steering knuckle and then the pitment arm will also more than likely need to be drilled out just a little bit the steering knuckles and the pitment arm um, those are typically like tapered so they start out thicker uh, for the this right here is a ball joint um, off of the F350 but if you look and see how it's tapered um, it's pretty much the same idea with a tie rod in um, the steering knuckle is tapered so that's why we need to drill out the part that is at the small end um, to where we'll be able to fit our three quarter inch bolt all the way through and it'll be nice and tight. Here is what I have so far now. Um, I welded up the drag link. Um, I've got that where I want it um, and I've got the measurement right here. Um, it's about 16 inches um, maybe a little more um, from uh, the um, heim here, center of the heim to uh, here where the mark is. So I figured out I need a roughly a 20 degree uh, bend in it. So um, this is the angle right here um that i need so uh, i used my square here um, and i'll show you guys i found the pivot point like this this is your pivot point um, so anywhere along here and then all you're gonna do is you're gonna move your angle up until um, it is going parallel with this angle um, and so as I go up here I'm watching this this is your degree if you were to go up to a 45 um, see how that is That would be a 45 degree angle off of this line right right here. So this would be a 45 degree angle off of this line here. So if I'm trying to go 
parallel with here, I come down till this line is parallel and that gives me roughly uh, a 20 degree. So, you know, I can move it down here and yep. So I wanna bend this to roughly a 20 degree angle. So I'm gonna hopefully take this tomorrow um, and find a shop that will be able to bend that for me um just because i don't have the right equipment to bend it what's up everybody uh, it is the following morning um i am headed into uh work but on the way in i'm going to stop at a uh, fabrication shop um, and see if they can bend uh, my drag link um, to a 20 degree angle so um, excuse me, I'm eating some coconut. Uh, alright, I have kind of some bad news. Um, I went to two machine shops today, um, and they, on the way to work, and they, both shops did not have any kind of pipe bender, nothing. Um, I'm very surprised that a machine shop would not have that. Anyways, they didn't. So, um, what I did is I went to Harbor Freight and I bought a 12 ton jack press. It kind of looks like this, uh, except it is the real deal. Um, and it will not break. <laughs> so, my strategy is I am going to heat up the uh, piece of tubing here. Um, it's actually in the truck, the one I'm bending, but I'm going to heat it up and then stick it in the jack or the uh, pipe bender. So I'm going to go ahead and set the pipe bender up. This is the 12 ton pipe bender from Harbor Freight. Um, let's kind of just see what we what we've got here. So, this is it right here? Um, you can adjust these for closeness um, and farther apart. Um, and you've got your handles here. You've got uh, your different size pipe, right like that. You can see you've got all different, and it says on the side, you know, one and a quarter. Um, and then the way these go is you literally just slip them on like that. Um, and then as you jack up, it pushes the center up and starts bending uh, the pipe. So I got this set up. Um, have my mark right here. And I stuck it in the pipe bender. And man, it bent it. Look at that. Bent the perfect angle that I needed. So... Um, the next thing to do now is I'm going to cut this pipe. Um, I'm going to cut it on the long side so I can at least maneuver it somewhat into place. Um, I think now is the time where I am going to take off the, um, previous stuff. So... I need to take off the tie rod um, ends here, pull these off, need to pull that one off, and then pull the pitment arm uh, drag link off. Um, once I pull that off, 
then I'll be able to take a closer look at what all um, I need to do. So I believe I'm gonna cut this off right here. Um, and that should be able to clear everything. Um, should even be able to clear the diff cover. So, um, cause it will drop it down lower. Um, since we're going on the bottom side, it'll drop it down even lower and that will give us more room cause this is angled. So we should be good as far as that goes. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and start pulling uh, the drag link and tie rods off. Okay guys, I have the drag link and tie rods off. So as you can see, um, I've got the drag link somewhat up there. Um, it should be enough. You know, this should work just fine. Um, I still need to drill out the um, steering knuckles on both sides and I need to drill out the pip. Okay guys, <laughs> um, we are getting very close to the end of this uh, project here. Um, let me just do a little recap real quick. I drilled out, this is a three quarter inch bit. Got it from Lowe's. Um, pretty much drilled out the steering knuckles um, to fit the three quarter inch bolt. So underneath I did that one as well. And then up here, I did the pitment arm, which is right here. I drilled that out to three quarter. I am going to tell you that pitment arm is very hard and steel and it was all that, um, it was pretty much all that my drill bits could do to get through there. Um, I was spraying, uh, you know, oil on it, oil on it to, um, you know, preserve the blade uh, drill bit. But uh, that one took a couple hours um, just because I had to run out to Lowe's and buy more drill bits uh, because I had ruined. I didn't have really nice ones and that is just tough. So you're supposed to take that whole pitman arm off and press it out with a drill press. Uh, I don't have a drill press and I didn't want to take it off. I did talk to my uh, powder coater um, at uh, White Oak Powder Coating and he said that he's backed up about two weeks. So I don't want to wait that long. So I think what I'm gonna do I'm just gonna paint these white. I've got the tie rod end right here, hanging up, and it is, um, I have sprayed it with the uh, white primer, and then now it's the white paint. Um, I just rattle canned it. Um, so this is what I'm using. The XO Rust Professional Primer, dries quickly, directly to metal. Uh, and then I'm just using this Rust-Oleum um, white paint. So the drag link, you can, I don't know if you can tell in this light, but this is more of a eggshell white kind of. I'm almost done here. Here you go, this is the drag link. It's all finished up, painted, clear coated. Um, got the Himes in there. And then here you have the tie rod in, same thing. Painted, uh, man, it looks, it's gonna look killer under there. Compared to the old setup, I just wrapped it up. The whole thing is completely done. I just took it on a 
a test drive um, and everything checked out good so now I'll get up under here look at that came out amazing just what I wanted couldn't be more happy so um, here's the situation with the Heim uh, the misalignment spacers uh, you've got this safety spacer right here then you've got this other smaller one and then you've got these other weird looking ones the the flatter ones are for the um, tie rod end and then the the biggest one is for the top side the far side this littler one uh, is for the part that meets right here so same thing with up here um, you've got the big one farther away from where uh, the uh, pitman arm is and then you've got that same smaller one right there uh, and that is how those go on and then if you look over here you'll see the same thing um, as the tie rod over there the flatter ones go and sandwich that so that is pretty much it um, if you have any questions feel free to um, you know drop a comment below um, there's more stuff that I did I couldn't film it all kind of like all the prepping and stuff so uh, measuring um, and that sort of thing so if you guys have any questions leave a comment below and I'll get back uh, as fast as possible and uh, yeah it made a huge difference uh, the whole front end is more stable uh, you know steering wise um, so that is it guys thanks for watching um, like and subscribe and I will catch you guys in the next video I'm out